Hello everybody, Sheldon with iHardware back with a video today. Uh, sorry I've made a video in a while, but I have been working on a Raspberry Pi project for school, which turned out uh, amazing. So once I get that thing back, I'll be able to show you guys it. Maybe I'll do some more project with the Raspberry Pi. I love the thing, it's the Model B version too, so I don't really have as much limitations as I would have if I had the Model A or something like that. So it does have um, 512 megabytes of RAM and uh, I believe a 1 gigahertz processor and stuff. So if you guys know so many cool projects I could do with it, once I get it back, uh, I'll be able to show that in another video. But anyways, today's video is not going to be about the Pi. It's going to be about some old tech that I have laying around and basically a collection that I have. You could have just seen it there, but basically uh, I'm going to show you guys some of it. And some of the stuff is music playing devices, if you can't already imagine a cassette player right there. So if you guys want to hear some audio test of it or stuff, I'll probably make another video after this showing the quality of the audio and stuff from... So anyways, uh, let's get into it. Alright, two things before I start. Uh, I do have a cold, so I might sound a little bit uh, not that good in the video, so just bear in mind with that. And also I am shooting in a different mode than I do usually. I'm not shooting in widescreen, but I do believe it's still show it. It is still shooting in uh, 1080p, so we shouldn't have to worry about it there. If you guys want me to go back to shooting in widescreen, let me know. And if it doesn't really work out that well, I will make sure to re-record this video in 720p. But I don't believe that will be the case. I think it is working fine. But basically I'm able to get a better uh, screen area and stuff with this. And so pretty much that's it. So let's get started. So the first thing I have is one of my favorite, and this is the Motorola Personal Communicator. If you can see that right there, Digital Personal Communicator, sorry. But basically this is one of those uh, early 90s phones that you always see in some of the uh, shows from the 90s, maybe early, late, late 80s. So pretty much this was a phone that was in my grandfather's car, and he gave it to me about two years ago. The battery on it is pretty much dead since it was pretty much plugged in 24-7 in the car. So that battery is no good, but I leave it on there since I do not have a replacement battery yet. I could get a replacement battery if I was planning to use this phone, which I still wish I could. But there you can see was where the um, plugs go in. I want to shut this all the way so I can show you guys the inside layer. But there's the charging port. The char I still have the charger for it, but it's the only the car charger. And uh, there's the mounting bracket, so if you uh, set down stuff on the charging dock, which I don't have, which is still in his car, um, would go. Uh, right here on the bottom, I didn't really show you guys this, but this is U.S. West uh, Digital Messaging, a cellular product by Motorola. So, I believe U.S. West became Verizon or something like that. I'm not quite sure. If you guys want to look that up, go ahead. But pretty much... That's it on that side. Let me shut that. Be careful with this. Uh, sorry about that. Let me just get the battery pack off. Things pain. All right, there you go. So, let's see if I can get some details here on the battery. If you guys, go want to go ahead and pause it. Go ahead. And then over here is some more specs of the phone itself. Uh, there's some phone numbers. I believe that's still the number. So I wouldn't recommend calling it to see. Uh, yep, made in the USA too. That's kind of rare. So. Uh, I don't plan on getting rid of this phone anytime soon. Sorry about that. That was my dog. But pretty much this is the uh, Motorola Personal Communicator. So let's get into the next device. Alright, so next in this uh, collection right here is my... one of my uh, Also one of my favorite is the uh, Panasonic uh, cassette recorder. So this thing, uh, I forget where I got it, but it's in phenomenal shape too. And... Basically, it would allow you to record um, personal uh, things or whatever, seeing these in schools and stuff, 80s, that kind of thing. So, all you do is you press the record button, don't have batteries, and it takes uh, four uh, AA batteries. So, it does use quite a lot of power, but the batteries do last quite a long time. So, it does have a uh, pretty good quality microphone. I'll do a test video with that, uh, next video, pretty much. So, basically, what you got here on the front is your mic uh, or your battery uh, LED, your record LED, um, stop button, record button and play button pretty much, your rewind and fast forward cue and eject and pause and then your Panasonic here. It's pretty much some brushed alum aluminum right here so pretty nice built quality. I believe this is built in America too just like the Motorola. 
Then along here on the side is some basically just some rough plastic you got right here for gripping it and stuff. And you could plug a mic into it and a remote, which I do not have. And then a DC, I believe, 6 volt power supply you could plug into it uh, to use it without having to use the batteries. So, show you guys. Oh, and also right here on the top is the uh, thing that you press to show how much you are into the basically the second counter. So, when the cassette's spinning and stuff, it will move this and showing you how many seconds you've been recording. And then on top here, you got your settings for the mic is mic sensitivity is high and low. Your speed, which is always fun to mess with. If you have a song or whatever, you just turn that knob and it will speed up the song, slow it down, whatever. Uh, you can turn that setting off right here if you want it on, off, or normal speed. And then the volume control right here. And then monitor slash headphone jack. It's only um, mono. It only comes out of one headphone if you plug in... Uh, a normal pair of say like Apple headphones or something like that it will only come out of I believe the right headphone but if you put it in a certain way and stuff it will come out of both headphones but it is only in mono uh, along back here there's just a speaker and there's some of the serial numbers and stuff oh wait no it's made in Japan so still pretty good quality uh, device great shape feels like a tank and let me just open this up here. So pretty much all you have to do to open it is you press this. Thing will open. If I could do this with one hand, there you go. Get your cassette out. It doesn't pop the cassette out like you usually would. And there you go. I do use have quite a lot of cassettes. Uh, a lot of these I made when I was in like uh, I believe sixth grade when I was like obsessed with a lot of these things. Uh, I would always go on radio stations and record a lot of my favorite songs and stuff. Uh, it'd be fun to go actually back through those and listen to some of them. So, anyways, let's get into the next thing. Again, before I show you guys the next thing, uh, I will be making another video after this uh, showing the sound quality of the cassette recorder and uh, the other device, which I'll show you guys uh, right now. So, the next thing I'm going to show you guys is not that old, but uh, it's still quite a funny thing since it never really took off that much because CDs and it was right between uh, cassettes and CDs uh, pretty much it looks like a floppy disk so I'll show you guys right now this is the Sony uh, Walkman net uh, there's some let me see if I can get focus in on there but pretty much it was not CDs not cassettes but pretty much it is a CD inside of a cassette tape so all you do to open it here I can't remember the name I'll post it though if I remember it uh, pops out here you got your colored disc so I only have one of these discs I haven't really gotten all over these things but oh it's the uh, mini disc that's what they were called so basically this was before CDs really took off in portable players since CDs were pretty big and stuff like that oh wait actually this I believe was between uh, CDs and mp3 players so when 3D's kind of started fading away, they kind of made a way to protect them and stuff like that. So pretty much it is just like a cassette. In fact, I got a cassette right here. Let me compare it to you guys. Sorry, one second. Let me grab it. So, as you can see, pretty funny. I just have that lane right there. They are pretty much similar if you look at the way they work. Sorry, I'm... I have a cold, like I mentioned earlier, so I might not sound that well. But this one has a locking mechanism, so you can't really open it without having it uh, inserted into here, which will automatically unlock it and open it up, so it prevents you uh, from touching that. And this is film that's used inside of cassettes and not a CD. So basically, it's just a mini CD that's inside of here. Pretty cool. Thing never really took off since, uh, I believe, Apple released, like, the um, uh, MP3 player just like a few days after one of those pretty much took off so old thing of technology but quite fun to use still uh... right here you got your menu button and your group button play record your uh... uh... chrome screen i forget what that's called uh... volume control there's some more uh... Oh, there's a better focus on, on those things and then uh... open button which you slide up to open it and nothing over here screws over here you've got your charging port. This is the older USB, uh, micro USB charger that you see on a lot of older phones and stuff. And then you got your hold button. I believe this like locks it. I don't remember uh, what that is, but I know I, I have that on uh, CD players and stuff like that. And you got your headphone jack, nothing along the back here. Anything like that. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, 
see if I can focus it on this stuff. Probably won't be able to. Oh, surprisingly, you did. Uh, I don't see where it's made, but it's probably. Let me see. If you guys see it on there, it is probably. I'm guessing Japan or something like that. So, if you want to go ahead, pause the specs. It does take uh, one AA battery, uh, so nothing special there. But cool piece of technology. I'll put that on later. But never really took off. I never really compared it too much to the cassettes, but it is smaller and stuff like that. So I probably compare it more to a zip drive or a zip disc if you guys know what those are and stuff sorry about that my shirt's pretty big so it's getting into the camera but yep pretty cool old piece of technology so let's get into that so the next thing is I'm going to show you guys uh, if you guys like cameras and that kind of thing the next two are cameras uh, pretty gold ones some old Polaroid cameras uh, land cameras actually so I'll show you guys the first one here so at first I got this recently I got this on Christmas uh, it looked like we had no idea what it was I believe my grandparents did know it was a camera and stuff but we didn't know how to open it so basically what you do to open it I believe is if you pull up on these two tabs I can't really do it with one hand but I'll set the camera down right here for a second I plan on getting a tripod in the future but pretty much if you press up on this and lift up the camera will unlock unveiling a beauty of a camera this thing is amazing I love it uh, it's it, I usually keep it closed keep the dust in and stuff um, pretty much so uh, yeah right over here you got your <clears throat> button to take the picture still works great nothing's worn out here believe your focus and uh, sharpness right there not too much of a camera person to tell you guys but if you guys want to know more or whatever go ahead and there's the name of the camera, the model number, and everything like that. So, nothing that special, but it is quite an amazing camera to look at these things and stuff. I believe this was like somewhere mid-70s, I believe. So, it's quite old and amazing condition, too. I've seen a lot of these. If you look them up on YouTube, there's some that are kind of worn out. And uh, the uh, leather here usually gets a little tinted color. So here's some instructions. It's getting quite a little bit dusty. I need to clean it up a bit. So right here it says, uh, up there it says Polaroid SX-70 Land Camera Polaroid Corporation made in the USA. So this is not probably made in the USA just like the Motorola. Sorry about the dust and stuff there. But uh, uh, right here it's funny to read this. So it says estimate distance, set distance, compose picture through viewfinder, press red button, hold it and use camera steady until picture comes out so I believe this camera does still work too uh, don't have any film to get for it but pretty much you get these uh, film and it's an instaprint camera too so it's one of those cameras where you take the picture it takes a few seconds and it prints out a piece of uh, paper right here like you see sometimes in the movies too uh, so you don't need it. it doesn't have any film for you to develop or anything like that so I believe you just lift this little tab up here or you press it down uh, which unveils the uh, ink cartridge and stuff like that to put ink and uh, paper in to uh, take pictures with. So there's the picture. Oh, that's surprising. I can actually get it in there and stuff like that. So pretty amazing camera. Quite cool way it looks too and stuff like that. Uh, I'm trying to think of what it actually looks like when it's closed like this. But people, um, a lot of kids nowadays would probably not even think of this as being a camera and stuff comparing it to like a normal camera like I'm using right now this is probably like five times the size of it and only could take pictures and stuff like that so pretty fun piece of technology and uh, plan on keeping this for a while too excellent condition if you guys want to look more up on it too and stuff like that uh, you can go back and pause it on the video I believe it's the SX70 something like that uh, Polaroid land camera so let's get into the next camera, which is also a Polaroid land camera, but this is the Polaroid one-step land camera, which is also one of my other favorites, mainly because of this uh, 60s type color scheme you got going on here. I believe this might have been, again, same about same era as that camera and stuff like that. But the advantage to this camera, I believe you might still be able to, oh yeah, you can put this... Um, uh, flash up here on the top in this socket right here allowing you to allow the flash and stuff like this this is brand new never been used uh, still was in the packaging and stuff like that I kept the packaging since 
uh, it is quite funny to look at and stuff like that, especially nowadays. Some dust there on the top. So, Flash Bar 2, General Electric, one of their older logos and stuff, or it's the same logo that you see nowadays, but kind of that older tinted look. Uh, so, Flash Bar, pretty much. Nothing that much about this camera. This isn't in, uh, stacked down like that camera, but it is an instant print camera too. If you can see right there is where the print comes out. Polaroid Land camera. There's your focus right here, your uh, lens, uh, your look through, and the uh, button for taking the picture. So I got it caught on the lamp right there, so still should be able to film it. Uh, nothing too much to look into this camera right now. Turn it around this way so I'll just tangle it up. Uh, let's see if I can get the look through the lens right there. Yep, pretty much. Looks better in real life, and I believe right here, I don't know what that is. It might be some type of a lock or something like that. There's like a little uh, arrow pointing up at it, so if you guys know what that is, go ahead and look it up. Uh, yeah, so I haven't really looked into this uh, camera that much t on YouTube or Google or any of that kind of thing, so... If you guys want to look it up some more or get some more pictures of it, uh, make sure to look it up on Google like I just said. So pretty much that's it for that thing. And I got one more thing to show you guys and then uh, that will be the video and I'll do a quick update at the end of this video too. So let's get into this. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys is a old Polaroid uh, DVD player. And uh, before I start, uh, I wasn't originally going to show you guys this because... Uh, it is quite dirty. We do use it still sometimes if I want to use a portable DVD player, surprisingly. Um, it's not that old, but still, if you look at it now compared to a lot of the modern day ones and stuff like that and see how far we've came, uh, it's quite fun to look back at. Uh, so, here it is. Polaroid DVD player POV-08238 uh, DVD player still works amazingly. I was going to use this in the Raspberry Pi project. Kind of giving you guys a hint there of what I used the Pi for. Um, so you'll see in that video once I get the Pi back. Uh, I haven't got it graded or anything like that. But again, it turned out quite amazing with what I used. I used a more of a, a different DVD player screen. One of these screens. It had pretty much the exact same one. But the twin to this that doesn't have the DVD player built in. I used as the LCD instead of this one. So pretty much. Uh, see if I can open this with one hand. It is a... Pretty decent DVD player still for nowadays standards. You get quite a lot of options too on the screen. You got your color, your uh, rotate mode, your brightness. So I'll show you guys what the rotates for in a second. Polaroid logo and two stereo speakers which sound surprisingly well. Uh, right here you got your things that you can use this for. CD, play CDRs, CD rewritable drives, again, still kind of dirty, needs to be cleaned up a bit. Uh, Kodak picture CD compatible, so I believe those are like the pictures, that, uh, CDs that you can get at like Walgreens and stuff like that. And it works as an MP3 player too, if you still want to use something like this for playing portable music, which I believe no one will. Lens is clean, everything like that, caution do not touch, still works. Uh, I always had the problem with uh, DVD players where the lens or something would die like that, and um, <coughs> sorry about that, uh, but they usually stop working after a while. This thing has been a trooper the whole time and worked surprisingly uh, very well. I have another Polaroid DVD player uh, that just connects to a TV. It's a DVD player, not a portable DVD player, and that thing also still works very well. And right here you got your power on and off switch. Your LED, um, battery LED, pretty much the most weight of this is the battery pack, which you guys can see there, which takes up quite a lot of um, space. So that's pretty much the battery pack. I could say is, pro oh, there's the battery LED, actually. This is just the power LED. But um, the battery pack itself is pretty much the size of like a mini iPad, something like that, uh, a little bit heavier too. So that's just to give you guys a perspective of how big it is. Got your open button for the... DVD, sorry if I pressed that right, um, got your preview next, uh, your enter, your move around buttons for the menu and stuff like that, audio, stop, play, pause, menu, title, info, and then alongside here, which I really like, is the, it has the volume thing, uh, just like the uh, cassette player that I showed you guys, um, <coughs> this does have a portable case that goes with it, which is pretty much like a leather case that this goes in, which I'll show you guys. 
how it would work if you could mount it to the back of a it lets you mount it to the back of a car uh, seat and stuff for like the kids to use and stuff like that uh, so we haven't really used it for that in like a long long time but anyways you got your headphone jack audio in or out uh, and video in or out and there's the switch to change it if you want to uh, have an input device so it does work if you say wanted to hook up an xbox or something like that to this if you had it on the go or say you're going camping instead of using a full size tv you can get an adapter to plug it into there or something like that sadly most consoles uh, all the newer consoles now don't support AV but I do know you can get adapters from HDMI to AV so this is not your normal size AV cables these are uh, like the micro ones and stuff like that but you can find adapters for extremely cheap uh, got your DC 9.5 volt in and uh, about on the back there's nothing too much here and then on this side again there's just another headphone jack if you had two people watching a movie or something like that <coughs> Alright, so what I was going to show you guys is right here, if you see this little arrow, what it, the rotate button and uh, <clears throat> what this DVD player allows you to do, which I really like, is you can rotate the screen like this. You fold this clip down, <clears throat> sorry, and then you just close it like that. So if you wanted to, the case that this goes in allows you to mount it to the back of a car seat like that. As you can see, pretty thick. Uh, compared to a lot of nowadays standards where it's like slot loading DVD players, but pretty fun to look at back at uh, in a few years and stuff. It'll probably be a little bit more cooler to see like uh, when DVD players and stuff are kind of like a thing of the past. They they are pretty much today, but people still use them surprisingly uh, along with Blu-rays, which I'm surprised Blu-ray uh, is still around too. But as you know, Blu-ray does has a pretty awesome sound quality and stuff like that. So anyways, that's pretty much Sorry, I ended that video so sudden I accidentally hit the uh, play button. So basically what I was saying is I'm going to make a quick update right now. So everything I have so far has been working well. I haven't been doing too much stuff with the Dell Optiplex. If you guys watch my channel, I have done some overviews of those and stuff like that. Everything's been going quite nice and uh, nothing too much to update on, but... Like I said, I believe I said this in my last video, I am building a computer and next month or sometime late May or June, something around that time. So I'll make sure to keep you guys posted and stuff like that. That, And I'll do some benchmarking and comparisons to my uh, Dell uh, um, Inspiron laptop. Sorry about that. But pretty much uh, nothing too much to update on. Both all the computers are working great still and... Yeah, pretty much. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll be sure to make a video showing you guys the sound quality of this DVD player, sound quality of the cassette player, and the sound quality of um, the uh, mini disc player like that. So keep you guys tuned and see how this VGA video guys work. If you guys like me filming it in widescreen, make sure to let me know anything like that. And like always, if you guys have any ideas or want to see a review of anything else in this video, make sure to let me know. And again, thanks for watching.